Hello everyone. I hope you're doing great. Would you believe me if I told you that seven French sailors, including an interpreter, emerged victorious from a standoff against 1,700 Vietnamese soldiers? No. Well, I don't blame you, but that's exactly what happened at Ninh Binh. This is the story of Mark Hautifoel and his heroic exploits. His role in history has been sadly overshadowed, and his military successes risk to remain hidden and unknown for the majority of people. This video, which is part of the Forgotten Historical Figures series, had the purpose to change that and give the deserved recognition to truly remarkable warriors who lived in different time periods but shared the same qualities and heroic nature. Marc was born on January 1, 1852 in the Normandy region of France. In 1868, he joined the Naval Academy and two years later, he fought in the Franco-Prussian War. In 1871, he was promoted to aspirant. He was then stationed in French Indochina, the actual Vietnam, where he served on a corvette, a small warship. Between November 1873 and February 1874, Potafuil was part of the French expeditionary force in Tonkin led by Francis Garnier. This officer is worthy to be part of another video of our series. If you so wish, please write me a comment. Although it was originally supposed to be a peaceful expedition, it soon turned into a full-blown conquest of the region after failed negotiations with the local governor. On 20 November, Garnier attacked the citadel of Hanoi with the 180 men of his expeditionary force. The French splitted their forces into three groups. Hodafui entered the citadel through the southeastern gate alongside Garnier and the main French force. The small detachment of sailors he was leading became responsible for the sole French casualty of the battle when they accidentally killed an allied Chinese mercenary. After having briefly mistaken him for a Vietnamese soldier, after the capture of the city, Lieutenant Garnier unilaterally declared the Red River open to French trade and sent Ensign Adrian Bonny Davercourt with the gunboat Espingol to receive the submission of the fortified cities of Hung Yen and Phu Li. Meanwhile, in Hanoi, Garnier had been informed that the governor of Ninh Binh and a runaway Mandarin were organizing to resist the French and building dams on the river. On 2 December, Garnier dispatched Tau Fuil, then a 21 years old aspirant officer, on steam launch with a four-pounder cannon, seven sailors, and an interpreter to deliver an order to attack Ninh Binh to Ensign Bounty Davercourt in Phu Li. When the steam launch reached Phu Li on the evening, Hodafui was informed that Ensign Davercourt and the Espingal had departed earlier that day. He was also notified of a large dam that was being built nearby, and he immediately decided to go and destroy it. Hodafuil and his men arrived to the construction site on the next morning. When the French landed, all the workers, local villagers conscripted to forced labor, ran away. Hodafuil and his men sank the boats loaded with bricks that had been gathered on the river and left. On the evening of 4 December, while resting with his men at the Catholic mission of Kiso, Hodafuil was informed that another dam was being erected down the river, very close from the city of Ninh Binh. He promptly decided to take care of this one as well, and at 11.00 p.m., he set out for Ninh Binh on his steam launch alongside his seven sailors, his interpreter, and a local civilian to guide them to the city. The steam launch arrived in sight of Ninh Binh near 4.00 a.m. Despite the pitch-dark night, many soldiers got on the walls at the sound of the steam launch and started yelling at the French. Hodafui responded by firing one of the six shells of his four-pounder on a fort. The Vietnamese extinguished the flames immediately. Hodafuil turned off the steam launch's engine and neither parties took any more action, waiting for the day to break. On the morning, the French could notice several hundreds of soldiers looking at them on the walls. As the steam launch tried to move out of the Citadel's cannon's firing range, the boiler broke down, rendering the ship unserviceable. Hodafuil promptly hopped inside the ship's small dinghy with six of his sailors and his interpreter and directed himself toward the shore, while the Citadel's guns fired a few unsuccessful rounds at them. Upon landing, the small squad was immediately swarmed with curious villagers. Potafil and his men marched with firm steps toward the Citadel's gate, and were soon surrounded by Vietnamese soldiers, 
who proceeded to march alongside them while pointing their spears and rifles, without daring to initiate hostilities. As they arrived near the citadel's moat, Hodafuil noticed the province's governor, Nguyen Vu. With his pistol in hand, Hodafui apologized for having shelled the fort, claiming it was in response to having been yelled at. A short negotiation ensued, but soon turned fruitless when the governor firmly refused to give in to Hodafuil's demands to enter the citadel. Losing his patience, Hodafuil suddenly seized the old governor by the collar and held his handgun at the governor's temple, threatening to blow his brain out if all the local mandarins had not been gathered in front of him within the next fifteen minutes. Some of the Vietnamese soldiers around them had moved forward at this sight, but they instantly pulled back when French sailors took aim. Thirteen minutes later, at 7.44, all the mandarins had been gathered and they entered the citadel alongside Hodafuil and his men. The governor and the other mandarins were kept as prisoners of war, while the 1,700 defenders of the citadel were disarmed and sent away. With the capture of the citadel, Hodafuya's seven men had effectively taken control of the city, as well as the entire province. Garnier briefly visited Ninj, been on 9 December, and left Hodafuya in charge of the province after having replaced his seven sailors with ten different ones. During the month he spent administrating this large province, Hodafuya paid visits to the city and neighboring villages with just his interpreter and no escort. He squandered a large share of the strings of cash coins found in the fortress by distributing them to random villagers he met. Embarrassed by the sight of locals kneeling and bowing when encountering him like they used to do with previous governors, Hotefuye had them replace this traditional reverence with the military salute. Within a week every villager he came across, men, women and children, saluted him by bringing their hand to their forehead. In late December, Lieutenant Philaster who had been sent by the admiral to terminate Garnier's unsanctioned campaign, arrived to the Tonkin and ordered the evacuation of the conquered cities. On 8 January, the gunboat Scorpion came to remove Hodafuil and his ten sailors from Ninjbin. Enraged by this unforced withdrawal, the young officer had all the guns of the citadel destroyed and threw the powder stock in the river before he left. Hodafuil's boldness and bravery left a strong impression on the inhabitants of the province. Following the French withdrawal, a revolt broke out in the Ninh Bin and Nam Din provinces as the dynasty restorationists rose up against Nguyen rule. Three letters were sent by rebels to Hotefuil, proposing to make him general-in-chief of the revolt if he accepted to lead them into battle. However, being bound by his allegiance to the French navy, Hotefuil had to decline, and the revolt was crushed after a few months. Hortefuil was promoted to ensign on March 17, 1874, and then to lieutenant in 1881. He was part of the French force that conquered Tonkin a decade after Garnier's aborted expedition, and notably distinguished himself in the operations of Bac Ninh in March 1884, during which he earned the Legion of Honor. In his later life, sources claim that Mark became an eccentric man, who was prone to bursts of anger but who also showed some touching paternal affection for his men. In 1890, he was stationed in Senegal, where he commanded the dispatch ship Arden. In 1896, he was stationed to St. Petersburg, where he was promoted to the rank of commander. Between 1901 and 1904, he was stationed to Oran in French Algeria. Hodafuil harbored a strong dislike for Zouaves, a famous infantry unit that consisted of European French troops dressed in fancy Oriental uniforms and whose flamboyant reputation earned them a certain popularity among women. One day, Hodafuil almost got himself challenged to a duel after having told a mounted Zouava officer he came across in a street that he couldn't decide which one of the two animals was the finest. Admiral Jean Ducou notably recounted an occurrence in which Commander Hodafuil gathered his sailors on the deck and then proceeded to distribute sweets and chocolates to each of them. While dressed in his colorful pajamas, and wearing his monocle. Another time, as the catnet was about to leave Tahiti, Hotefuil organized a party and invited local Vahines, exotic Tahitian women, on board the ship. In July 1909, just before his retirement, Hotefuil was promoted to the rank of rear admiral. Hotefuil then moved to the 17th arrondissement of Paris, 
where he lived a bourgeois life alongside fellow retired Navy veterans until his eventual death in 1923 at the age of 71.